Okay. It's working. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to mute everyone for the first half of it, so don't be shocked. Okay. Can you give me like a thumbs up if you can hear me? Lovely. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's see if it works. It's streaming. Okay, perfect. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, it's a pleasure. I think this is the very first dialectic event uh, that has been ever, you know, hosted on YouTube in the whole history of YouTube and probably the first event for like a few thousand years or so. Uh, maybe we have some, some other dialectic events uh, going on in the world in the history. I don't know. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. Um, this one is going to be li live streamed into YouTube. Uh, with a little delay, I guess. So it's like a few few seconds or something. Um, but anyway, uh, hi and welcome. Um, so good to see everyone. So uh, let's read out who's in the podium, actually. Because it's so good to see you all and say hi to you if I know how to, how to see everyone. So I'm... Um, Basically seeing Claudia, Amber, Victoria, Pamela, and I can't see the other ones. <laughs> oh, I can. Okay. Um, uh, Ruth, hi. Um, Simone, Victoria, and Daniela. I think that's, that's it. So good to see everyone. Hi. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, so basically what we're going to do... Uh, today in this first dialectic uh, live stream is we are going to talk about a certain way uh, how to structure a whole new nation. The reason for that is because, um, you know, humanity has reached a point uh, where it feels like there are two less ideas in the world um, right now and we should change that. I mean, who else uh, but we? And so... Uh, let's dive into that. Give me one sec. Okay, here I am. Um, so let me explain how, what's, what we're going to do. Um, so basically we have one hour and again, anyone on YouTube, uh, welcome. And anyone uh, from the Agorian, so cool to see you. Um, I'm going to present this idea because uh, it's on my mind for quite some time and I'm you know, really, really happy to get this into, into the world finally, uh, which is basically we're going to talk about the nation of dreams, at least my dream. I would love to see that, actually. So um, I'm going to present that. Uh, and the idea of dialectic is actually, um, and I hope that you're going to get involved with that a little, uh, is that we discuss that, that you bring in some more ideas, that I'm going to listen to your ideas, how you want to, you know, live, and the whole world out in YouTube uh, is going to, you know, be filled up with some new ideas. Um, so dialectic is actually, you know, coming from the ancient Greek uh, times. Uh, it's, it's meant to, uh, to focus on the dialectic point, which means oh, we have Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, welcome. Um, again, welcome to the Agora. And uh, what we're going to do is the dialectic... Uh, um, hi, <laughs> that's cool, Sarah Sula. Um, uh, so, where were I? Um, I was explaining like uh, what we're gonna do. So the Agora is actually a place and was a place, used to be a place in ancient uh, Greek. So it, it used to be the the birthplace of democracy, and that's actually what I want to do with you. Uh, because, because it feels like the world is drifting apart a little, if not a lot. And it feels like we should, you know, get into this mood of bringing ideas into the world. Um, and I want to share my, you know, dream world or one of them uh, with you. And I want to listen to you too and, you know, hear what you, gotta, you have to say and what you have to add on that. Um, so the idea of uh, this uh, Agora event is dialectic. And dialectic, again, um, 
coming from the old Greeks, you see Athena here in the background. Uh, that's actually the goddess of ancient Athens. Um, and it's also the goddess of democracy. And hi, Camille. <laughs> Um, so I was just explaining. Um, she's the goddess of Ath uh, of Athens. She's the goddess um, of democracy. Uh, and what those people in ancient Greece and it's not fully perfect. I'm explaining you why. Um, but what they were doing actually is they had this place called the Agora, or uh, uh, yeah, Agora. Um, where people gathered together and they were discussing and they brought in new ideas. And from that, they built this whole city. And Athens used to be, if you imagine that, that it used to be one of the centers of the world, becoming from this small town to like a, a, like, like, like a global nation, one of the most powerful you know, uh, cities. Uh, and actually, it used to be like a uh, city nation or a nation coming from the city, actually. So um, very, very uh, high evolved into philosophy. And the dialectic idea is uh, used to be uh, like this competition because people were acting upon the duality of you and I, and they were searching for uh, points where uh, this dualistic principle uh, was destabilizing their rhetoric. And today what we're going to do, we're doing the reverse thing, because as we know, it didn't went very well with ancient Greek Greece. They came into uh, some, some troubling times. Uh, and we're going to do the, the other way around. We're going to do it vice versa, versa and we're going to um, have uh, a wonderful discussion and presentation about uh, how we can come from this point where we are right now and fill it up with some new ideas. So, hope you're ready. I'm gonna start uh, my presentation of and and you know introduce you to my idea of of what I would love to see, uh, and then let's open up. And once we hit like a spot where it you know uh, where we come to a point where we don't have anything to say anymore. Then we open up for some other questions. We're going to talk about ETs and stuff and maybe see if this is possible to stream it into YouTube too or not. Um, and we have someone else. Courtney, thank you so much for joining, Courtney. Hi. Okay, uh, let's start. Um, so basically, my idea is um, because, okay, we have uh, capitalism, right? We have capitalism really, really strongly merged with this society, with this world. And it feels to me, I mean, there's a lot of, we all would love to live in a different world, but it seems like they, you know, hold so strongly to capitalism that it wouldn't, like a communist nation or any other utopia wouldn't actually work, I guess. I think this is my, my viewpoint. Um, that it wouldn't, you know, it would draw a lot of protest uh, and, and, you know, uh, resistance uh, to it. So what if we do something like that? We rebuild first a city and then a lot of cities and then the whole nation into an amusement park similar structure. And what that means is um, that we basically center the whole city about the idea that people love to have fun. They all want to be happy. They all want to, you know, get into a feeling of, you know, life is worth living and it makes sense to be here. And when that happens and you restructure the whole city, then actually the city can take money from people who are visiting the city or even living there or whatever in order to, you know, grow that idea. And um, <laughs> I actually have prepared some, some, some ideas, some pictures, some drawings, some stuff that I, you know, came up with, which is basically... Okay, so I printed them out. This was before I learned that I could just, you know, have shared my, <laughs> my window. <laughs> Uh, but look at that. Wouldn't that be beautiful? You know, if we, and I can't share my, my window. Why, why should I put it up? It's just because I printed it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure. 
I'm, uh, let me see, uh, a, a window. Um, there we are. Ta -da. Okay, um, so this is basically uh, just a little idea that I came up with how I, you know, would love a city to look like, like focus on the the way the the houses are built, the way uh, it's merging with nature, the way that it's lighted, the, the ambient light. Um, it, it creates this energy of, you know, you want to be there. You want to live there. You want to enjoy this this town. And you might want to live and visit it too, maybe as a tourist or something. And this creates a lot of, you know, beautiful energy actually. And if you now say like, hey, Tim, this looks like a typical German town, which it doesn't. <laughs> it, <laughs> Germany nowadays doesn't look that way anymore. But it used to look like that. Swiss and, and other nations, they, they had this aesthetic, you know. So... Um, and the reason for that is actually because historically, before we went into, you know, uh, nations, uh, we actually had this, you know, uh, patriarchal states of, of, um, of society, you know, where kings and, and uh, other, you know, people, uh, high-ranking individuals or whatever, uh, they were, you know, um, ruling over the cities. And they were in this kind of uh, competition with each other. So uh, basically, if you go back into the 1800s, 1700s or something, like people in Europe, they were trying to build the rulers, were trying to build the most beautiful city. Uh, and Paris was the, the city number one. And especially Germany, they were like trying to imitate Paris like a lot. Uh, and through this, weird competition all these wonderful buildings that you know that you have in mind when you think of germany or swiss or something all these beautiful cities arose because uh, actually these rulers were trying to compete uh with what they saw in paris and what they what they found like hey we gotta have this too because we're a great nation and stuff unfortunately this went into you know the typical human thing where they went to war with it and you know destroyed a lot of the other stuff but what if we and this is the dialectic so in ancient greece they would say yeah what's about war but what if we actually go into this you know capitalistic idea and think of hey let's build something that is so beautiful so wonderful so so nice to look at uh, that people, you know, came come over from all over the world and want to visit us. Actually, I'm gonna close this down. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's the actual history of European cities and why they become so romantic and beautiful was actually uh, because they had the same idea. These rulers. Uh, they they were all about hey how can I make my my country beautiful more beautiful than the other countries and I feel it feels like nowadays it's uh, it's a little different because it's so uh, people do not seem to care more care anymore about the cities uh, it's a little it seems a little bit different in the U S maybe you could could talk about that later on because what I felt in the U S is that because uh, they are left. People in the, your communities are so left out from the government that people are still feeling kind of responsible for the communities. I don't know if this is true, but this is this was my impression that people, you know, care f a little more for their communities. Maybe it's wrong. Tell me if not. Again, but what happens with the energy of this beautiful city when we care for that? If we create a space, especially for art, for art, for example. Uh, and there's this theory that uh, you can see the health of a nation, of a whole civilization, uh, when you look at the buildings, the way the buildings are structured. So if you have beautiful buildings, uh, then this you know, correlates a lot with the nation, with the civilization, with the species to be very, very healthy compared to you know, building just skyscrapers uh, next to each other, um, you know, this tends to be 
in the the late phase of a you know civilization or a nation or something where they change their aesthetics of the buildings but again what happens if we if we do that if we focus upon uh making it as beautiful as possible and this can be done in a very small neighborhood this can be done in a very small community it can begin with you know planting some some flowers uh i've i've tried to to go to detroit i've i've heard a lot of uh, about detroit where they you know were planting these apple trees and fruit trees so people can you know grab their fruits and have them so what happens if we create more flowers if we start to invest in more music in more art if people come to the city just to see the amazing artists that we have there and i'm not talking about established art i'm talking about like a day where every one of us is just painting the the you know living whatever out of it so uh and and then the whole city is exhibiting this beautiful art and people from all over the world is gonna are gonna come and see that and uh you know pay some entrance fees and um we have music all over the place this will draw in more people that you know play an instrument because i can tell you from from my perspective as a german it's really really hard to find people that like music and this might sound weird to some cultures but it's true to germans german culture at least to my point opinion um so it's it's uh if you have a city that you know resolves around music then this will draw in musicians this will draw in people that want to dance this will draw in people that want to you know move and what happens then is that you create this whole new energy around the city so it's not anymore the city that is you know stuck in the energies because people are you know uh foc focusing on other stuff and more or less the energies of a city are actually at this time you know determined by the traffic jam and the traffic and all that stuff that's going on it's like the blood uh, of a city um, but if you have people that dance people that make music people that enjoy life uh, then this creates the strong new energy around the city and this will attract a lot of new people and from all the money that the city will make and i think this concept will you know work out pretty fine if you have like a lot of festivals a lot of music um the city could take you know some some money from that or whatever they could actually invest this in clean streets because this is one of the things that you know bothers me like a lot uh it feels like these you know taxes do nothing to the cleanliness of the streets um and if we have this you know if the city is dependent on people to visit uh, their cities then being like a, a clean city is so important you wouldn't go to to disneyland if it was like full of junk right no one would do that people go to disneyland because it's the happiest place in, on the in the world why not do that and apply it to like smaller cities smaller towns and spread it all over the world and then you have like cities competing with each other so maybe you have this italian city so sarah you're from from italia like you have this italian background so if you have like a city that you know focus on the whole flair that you know Ital uh, italy has to offer um this would be like a totally different flair compared to what germany or a northern city would have to offer um and this was would create this healthy competition a healthy competition where people would uh you know want to go and visit these other cities and interestingly enough um you might know that you know people have these uh these weird uh you know plates uh earlier maybe you know that from your grandparents or something where they have plates on the wall and on the plates there's you know uh a design of the city that they have visited i'm not quite sure if this is a thing in the us but it it is it used to be a thing in europe as, especially 
And this actually comes from the time where, you know, before nations were born and people were actually visiting other cities. And to prove that they were there, they brought these dishes with, <laughs> with the, the images, the pictures of the city, the name of the city. Like, wow, I've been to Dresden or I've been to Berlin. I've been to Rome. And they, you know, instead of, you know, eating from them, they, you know, glue them to the, uh, to the tapestry, to the wall or something, just to show off like, hey, I've been to Paris. Um, and this would happen, actually. So people would, you know, the same way that Disneyland or something would, you know, attract people, draw in people. And... If we're talking about Disneyland, then the interesting thing about this is uh, that you probably all have heard about Epcot, uh, which is like this theme park uh, that, you know, opened in 1982. Uh, this is actually coming from an idea from Walt Disney. And Walt Disney had the exact same idea. So Epcot wasn't used or shouldn't become a theme park but it should have become a city, a, you know, a model city, a role model city uh, for a new way for humanity to live together. This was the idea the, of uh, Walt Disney. Unfortunately, you know, he passed away before this park opened and Disney became, you know, more and more capitalistic and more and more focused on other stuff. Uh, so they basically, what they did was just like, throw that idea into um, you know the the trash trash and replace it with the, uh, the the theme park that everyone knows today but it's the same concept so people go to Epcot because they want to see you know how Paris looks like um, how Rome looks like how I don't know Canada Germany uh, which is basically Bavaria so, <laughs> so please everyone visiting Epcot uh, it probably has, has has nothing to do with germany so don't be don't be uh disappointed if you ever go to germany but again um this is the idea so walt disney was one of those people who had the same thought that we need to have these you know structured uh cities and probably because this is something that we see a lot in the universe actually and a lot in those holistic societies out there like there are humans out there and they're living on planets, uh, you know, far better structured than this one. But they have like these little city states, like little nations that govern themselves uh, and spread all over the planet. And they don't, you know, get into war with each other because, but they have this healthy competition. Like they try to be a beautiful, beautiful, a city that is worth living in and worth visiting because then they attract people they attract people that want to you know vibe with that they they attract people that want to build that idea and they attract people that are actually visiting and spending their money in these you know communities okay this has been my uh you know presentation of what i think would work very well and i'm like five minutes short so um again thanks for listening that was my part of this dialectic and i would love for you know all the agorans whatever idea you have uh, just type this you know little uh hand symbol raise hand control plus alt plus plus h uh and we we'll talk about that and I give it to Pamela. So Pamela, thank you so much. I it's up to you now. And I think you're muted. So you you need to unmute yourself. Ah. Uh. So now your your video is gone. So I think you need to unmute and un, un plus video yourself. <laughs> I hope you can still hear us.
I, uh, Pamela, I hope you, you're hearing us. Huh? Looks like a microphone. Yes. Did you unmute the group? Um, I. Yeah, it looks like you can. Ah, okay. Let let everyone turn on their microphones. Yes, you could. Pamela, there you are. I know it's kind of complicated. <laughs> I had like a few hours with Google today to set all this stuff up. Uh, so I can completely relate if anyone, you know, uh, is actually struggling with this. Okay. Uh, anyone else before uh, we go to, to Pamela? I mean, could anyone could uh, please tell me if this is true? Like, if the U.S. is really more into building their small communities because they don't have the support of the whole, or if this is just an illusion? Uh, if anyone from the U.S. could please answer that, I would really be be happy. You're also muted. Why is everyone muted? Why is everyone muted? You can unmute it. Oh yeah, someone said Sarah. Yes. No, who who whoever who said something? <laughs> Daniela. Oh, then you then you okay. click on the whole thing, then on the bottom it shows uh the red phone, the camera, uh, put the hands up. Like you have to like it's on the bottom yeah there's a microphone mm -hmm. like control and d is is the the is hand the up yeah someone is saying me? something That's That's me. Back. Pamela. <laughs> now Who's i can't that? Oh, see myself <laughs> okay all right now i cannot see myself for some reason um all right, you can well, you, there's this uh, camera camera if you press control and e then you turn on your camera I actually <laughs> you don't see it. Well, it's okay. It's no problem. Um, you, you get so, the space anyway. Yeah, I can speak to this. So, Tim, what you were talking about is very interesting because I happen to live in a tourist town that is in a beautiful place, and millions of people come here for the experience. The environment, the way it's built, there's certain building codes where the houses, the buildings can't be above a certain height. They blend into the landscape. And this place has a long, long history of people living here, multicultural as well. Um, full of art, it's known all over the world for art and the art events. So people do come here. And it also has um, a beautiful outdoor environment, which is what draws people here as well. The problem is, is that it's almost unaffordable to live here. And so people who live and work here have to make a lot of sacrifices. And it's gotten worse with some of these changing dynamics with Airbnb taking up all the rental units, um, people with lots of money coming in and buying houses and having second houses, all that kind of stuff. So it is a problem, but those things, if they are addressed, would make this place absolutely stellar. Right now it is just, it's gorgeous. Like I said, millions of people come here um, and it has all those elements, which I think is really interesting. And you sometimes forget when you live in a place like this, how astonishing it is and how beautiful it is of the beauty you see every day, but the actual lifestyle and the physical environment and the people, you know, from all over the world come here. Wow, that sounds beautiful. Do you want to like share in what uh, what country this is? This is the United States Southwest, and it's and as soon as I say this, everybody's going to know it. Santa Fe. So okay. everybody's heard of Santa Fe. So yeah, but oh, the problems okay, yeah. need to be addressed. You know, the yeah. problems do need to be addressed. There's a huge problem with housing right now. 
Nice. Yeah, I see that. So uh, this was something that I thought about actually that, you know, the, the more the beautiful, the more beautiful the place gets, uh, the more. There you are, Pamela. There I Hi. am. Wow. So sorry. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel Hello. technical. I've been having technical problems all day today. A lot of the cameras weren't working on my computers for some weird reason. Wow. Anyway. Yes, no problem. Now we see what you. And th by the way, thank you for um for you know uh, telling us that. So it's it's really interesting. So I was thinking that um this could be like a problem when you have like the city that becomes so beautiful that people you know with a lot of money are going to move there. Um, mm -hmm. But I think there's like if you first of all if you do that and you have a lot of cities. Um, then you have this kind of dispersion. So pe people will, you know, move to, to different cities and you have, you know, different cities with different folky, different, uh, different, different styles. I think that is something that is so, so attractive about, for example, Epcot, that you, you go to a different place that just suits you. So if you have the city that is, you know, all about rock music, or if you think about, you know, uh, Back in the 70s, where people go to uh, San Francisco, I guess, um, where you have all these hippies and stuff, then you create this, uh, you know, draw, you draw in these people, actually. So uh, I was thinking, like, if you give this time, then you're going to have, like, different cities that are super beautiful and attract different people, I guess. That's so cool. Thank, so, thank you so much. Um, do you want to like add something like where do you want to live or uh, any any ideas what we could like add to this city? Like I don't know, like an amusement thing, like a ferry, or uh, I don't know, wheel or something. Oh, the big Ferris wheels. Yeah. So I uh, have family that lives in Seattle, and Seattle is a gorgeous city as well, and I enjoy visiting there. Um, so, so cool. you know, and it has different things that go on there as well. So, yeah, I do think that there's lots of different cities that have lots of different things to offer. And I think that if they do continue to specialize in those things, then, you know, it becomes accessible to everybody more than just for tourism. Um, yeah. Am, am I right, actually, that I was under the impression because when I went to the U.S., I saw these cities and people were organizing a lot which is uh not the case so much in well not at all in germany actually um germany's german people stick a lot to themselves but and have these uh, you know certain clubs where they where they do stuff but uh like sports clubs and and i don't know but i felt like in the us you have these um because they these the government is actually not you know over protective in in the way that it is for example in germany and i feel like the us people are really creative with their small towns is this like uh, is this true am i am i right there or is this yeah yes Oh yeah, because I because I've seen some people they were like uh, they they wanted to I think it was football or soccer or something and I wanted to establish that actually in Colorado so when I was doing uh, Gaia um, and they were trying to establish a a football club or a soccer club actually um, and and uh, they they don't get any funding from the the government they don't get any money uh, and in Germany it's different in Germany the, the the government is actually paying for these clubs very little but they do uh, support them so they had to raise this huge festival actually and they were doing like live music and inviting people and you know trying to uh, and people were donating and and this helped to help them to raise actually this this uh, football club or soccer club, uh, I found this pretty pretty cool actually. So yeah, this this actually feels like uh, the there's a lot of dynamic to the to, in the U.S. Uh, compared to uh, to Europe actually. Pro pro probably because you are so uh, you're more deeply into this you know capitalistic thing than Europe probably. I don't know. Um, Pamela, thank you so much for, for telling us that. Oh, my pleasure. It's an interesting conversation. I hope so, actually. I hope. 
um, because I think it's super important that we bring these ideas into the energy field of the, the world. And we're going to upload this to YouTube too, so people can watch it uh, and, you know, think about it. Just think about it. Maybe it helps one of those little smaller towns, you know, where they just start growing flowers and, and some trees or something and clean, clean streets would be nice. Um, Sarah, you're next. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So Pamela, when you were talking, I was trying to guess where you live. Um, <laughs> and it's so funny. I lived in Santa Fe for a little bit and I thought you were going to say Sedona because that was the next place I lived. Uh -huh. I was in Santa Fe and then I moved to Sedona. Very similar circumstance very much so a tourist town, small buildings that really blend into nature, which is so beautiful. Yet the same circumstance where the housing is just skyrocketed. And for example, there's no really regulations around it. So I was renting out a home with a couple of friends. It was a beautiful place. Yet last minute, they they decided to sell the house and we had to be out by like three weeks later. <laughs> what? How could this be possible? How is this real? But it's so funny it when <laughs> it happens there too, right? I heard oh, that. Oh, yeah. I know several people have recently been put in really difficult positions because the landlords just tripled their rent because they can get it now. So, yeah. And, and it's, it's so interesting because imagine if most cities were like this, I could imagine that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the case, but not many cities are like that. Isn't that weird? Why is that? Why why are only like few spots? It's like this um, in in Colorado. You have this uh, this famous uh, you know winter sports uh, city that is called uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's close to close to Boulder actually. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Aspen? 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank thanks to all the U.S. <laughs> Americans here, <laughs> uh, and it, it's. It's so weird because this city is actually, uh, you know, pushing out all the millionaires. Uh, the, all, those billionaires are actually pushing out all the millionaires out of the city. Uh, and they are complaining like, hey, <laughs> like I have two million. Why? Why can't I live here? So, uh, yeah. yeah. It's and on another on another note, that's so wild too. just sh goes to show what's happening. But on another note, I'm it, at this point considering where to live next. And right now I'm in the Catskill Mountains. It's beautiful, but there's no yeah, town beautiful. center. There's no like real cute town center. And I love when that's a part of it. I'm in the woods, which is awesome. It's beautiful. It's cool. But I'm missing that element of like that homey vibe. And when you put up the picture, Tim, I was like, I want to live there. <laughs> How can I live there? <laughs> Yeah, me too. Really uh, <laughs> actually, I, I, um, I actually have to. I have some more pictures. I wanted. I want to Show share. Us. Them, so I'm going to share them with you. <laughs> um, so, I've one. This is uh, like a little more artistic. It's uh, down the waterfall. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know. I'm gonna bring it on screen. Actually. Um, here we go there we are okay so this one is there we are uh this one is actually you know like like this it's more like a theme park actually and it's it seems like a little too unreal to live there but it feels like if this is achievable in disney world why is that not achievable for a standard city right the whole thing, the whole reason for Disney World, why we love that, is because it's so so up abstract. And and when I was doing these, um, you know, projects, and they were telling us that there are like visitors from from other worlds, other planets that are actually coming to this planet just for Disney World. Uh, <laughs> I thought like I was I was basically meditating on that like why why are they doing that and and the reason uh where the dragons there <laughs> <laughs> yeah no dragons here <laughs> hopefully we keep them out um 
they they might be the reason why things went down you know a little little uh bad down down the road <laughs> um yeah so so i was i was thinking like uh we have so much so much resources as a you know collective why can't we build something like that it would be so cool and it's different to the to the other artwork and people could go there because they love water it looks a little like hobbit town a little like um lord of lord of the rings or something and it would be so fantastic i guess so yeah mm -hmm. just want to show that to you do you want to add something like uh like any any idea to to the to the to the city that we are building right now sarah yeah i feel like the thing that i i almost like i don't know the proper word to use but almost like the village vibe where people really are supporting one another it's not so separate and i'm thinking of something i heard about the japanese culture i think where children as young as six are seen as being able to go out and shop and like do things on their own and they, they wear a little yellow flag or something and the idea is that the whole community looks out for that child like everywhere that child goes it's everyone's responsibility to look out for that child and i thought like what a beautiful sense of community that would be and more in alignment perhaps with how we all naturally feel on the spiritual side for one another, that we're all one, but are we really taking care of one another in our communities in that way? So I feel like something that my heart longs for is that village vibe. I don't know why I say the word village, but like we know one another, we support one another, we come together in community. And I feel like Santa Fe had a good, element of that like there's a lot of the bartering system when i was living there i noticed that mm -hmm. just was so incredibly cool i was like wow what a system that there there's such a big barter culture there and um i i've noticed that missing i've lived a lot of places and i've i've personally noticed that missing of like community really being there for one another coming together i believe it's coming alive more but that's the thing I would add to. Like, I wonder, and I think the music would do that, the art would do that, but that's that's the other point that I feel like would be so beautiful to see more of. Oh, that's so cool. I really, really like this idea to, uh, you know, keep track of the, the children all together because mm -hmm. it feels like the right thing to do for the whole species. Well, you know, the species coming from this uh, bonobo apes and they are actually doing that. And this is like their signature move actually uh, because they they have children and they all take care of them together uh, and they you know the the chil children do really good and there are some social experiments where people have uh, tried this uh, with the human species actually and children were developing so much better so much better so i really enjoy that Sarah. really do and I actually um because <laughs> I don't know the the next agora. I would love to actually talk about you know this the the um, the utopian mother and father thing. This is something that mm -hmm. I you know would love to get into. I'm I'm not quite sure if you uh, if if you love that too, but I would definitely love that because we have some some amazing parents in our community, uh, and I feel like this this could be so cool to 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 hear some impressions and and talk about that actually. So cool. Yeah, awesome. um, Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, where you go? There you are. I don't know your name. I'm B D. What? It's me, Bree. Hi. Everybody. Oh, hi. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Okay, kinda, cool. Good to see you. Snuck hi. in a little late and heard the conversation. It was so interesting. And I definitely have experience in living in like a collective kind of community um, and putting on festivals. And it was actually donation based and, you know, definitely didn't like make any money. So it's really hard to like earn a living like that. And uh, I'm in Michigan right now so i'm in upper michigan and i was in lower michigan and it was a really good group and it was like a total like open door policy it was called uh grand rapids autonomous support system and it was like every tuesday and we would just like kind of meet up at somebody's house and it was it it was really awesome but uh because of that 
a totally like boundaryless community, a lot of other things happened in it. And I think that happens with a lot of like different spiritual communities or people trying to do this is it was radical inclusion. And then we realized that that wasn't a really good pillar <laughs> because, um, you know, certain people need different health services. Um, so yeah, that was really cool to be a part of. And we did two festivals together. And I mean, it was the best like time. I'm a mom right now. So like definitely settled down. But if uh, anything, I'm definitely in community theater and community theater brings people together. Like, you know, everybody is needed and necessary there. And it's such a good project to work on. So I've been finding that like so um, inspiring and scary at the same time because it's pretty vulnerable. Also, nudist communities. That's what's up. <laughs> Not in like a sexual way, but in like a total like embodying of your whole self and just being like completely there and vulnerable. It's pretty beautiful. I mean, that's not really like kid friendly, but for grown ups, that's grown up Disneyland, I think. That's interesting. I mean, I think the culture around you know nudity in Europe is, is uh, slightly different than in in um, in the U.S. Um, because you know, Eastern Germany, they were naked like every every on every vacation, <laughs> like everywhere. Yeah, it's um, kind of a natural thing. Like it should. I don't know. It's kind of weird that it's so sexualized, but it's it's very funny because like to like at this very moment there's a uh, French city in France that um, they have an art gallery that you can only enter if you're completely nude <laughs> because it creates a you know this it it shall create this immersion with uh, the art factor actually so it's it's for because they have this huge community of people you know running around without clothes And they make this art especially for them, and uh, you you should get involved with the the art more you know intimately if that makes sense. Uh, I really I enjoyed this article that I read in the newspaper. Actually, <laughs> it's uh, thought like that's interesting. Yeah, but again, I've I've been to uh, to India actually um, after some of those projects because I felt like I wanted to to see some other. Uh, you know some other cities, and I went to Oroville, uh, which is you know the spiritual uh, city um, that they built there, and they have uh, they integrated a lot of really cool ideas, but um, they also have this problem that the whole uh, you know Indian um, you know society is actually all around them, so um, they they get you know influences from from outside a lot um and you know they have some some issues with that but i feel like if you for example could um you know integrate just just a few things just like starting uh with this energy that you brought in for example for the festivals and stuff uh if you you know accumulate that accumulate that then at some point you have this beautiful city that all people you know want to go to and Probably the same thing then uh, happens then with uh, like like an Aspen or a Santa Fe, uh, where it's getting really really um, you know uh, expensive. Uh, but then people are going to move to another city. It's like this Darwinistic idea, you know, where this uh, natural flow is actually starting. And and if we it's have more a, cities like that, what? It's like kind of like a gentrification process of like the beautiful land you know and and when people kind of come in like land's so cheap in upper michigan like but when i lived in colorado like there's no way i could afford to live in another apartment after a year like total inflation wow yeah i know the 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 prices in colorado are extremely high it's it, it's incredible actually like thousands of dollars for for just a, a small flat or something uh again thank you so much um and let me let me restate because i loved sarah's uh, question actually like um uh what's in on your heart Wh where do you want to live what's your what's your yearning what do you long for um if you have like uh something to say uh raise your hand 
and and speak it out. Uh, Amber, 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 you here? But I can't see you. You need to work the magic with the microphone. There you are. We can see you, but we can't hear you. Uh, okay, Emma is saying uh, she would like to live in your in the water town. Oh, that's cool. Emma, don't you have like a microphone or something? Okay. Like you, you could unmute you if you if you have a microphone. You don't know why? Uh, how? <laughs> Mic will not open up. Okay. Okay. That's that's weird. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna read your comments. Uh, so you're typing in them in, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna read them. So uh, Amber says, um, populate with fish, fruit trees on the side. I would like to live in the water town. Uh, yeah, me too. Me too, actually. Um, and I do, I do. I don't know why I all, why I printed these out. I should have uh, I should have looked into the program. But they they look really fancy, don't they? I think I should you know put them on the wall or something. This is another one that I made, which is you know showing a, a park actually. And the reason actually why I'm why I'm showing these pictures is because again we're all connected with the uh, the influence field. And look what you know Walt Disney made with just a few uh, ideas. He he basically came up with one of the the biggest um, theme parks uh, that is possible. So um, I'm going to show you just another one. And then, Daniela, uh, you're next. Um, let me see a window. There we go. Share. And here we are presenting. Um, OK, here we are. This is like. <laughs> A heart from Simone. Thank you. Um, or Simone? Should we shall we use the German pronunciation anyway? Um, uh, this is like like just one park that I you know uh, created because I felt like if we have like these beautiful parks and and uh, and I I went to New York actually uh, like uh, last year or something after we you know done the the recordings and the the filming for Gaia I went over to New York and um, I felt like the Central Park is like this is so incredibly important for the whole city what would happen to new york if they would get rid of that central park actually it would like be disastrous so i thought like if if people have this you know beautiful nature and this beautiful architecture that you know merges with nature uh this will draw in a lot of you know nature loving people that you know come to that place and will actually want to live there and uh maybe this is not for the new york business type of person who wants to buy like a 30 million dollar apartment or something um, but maybe more for the hippie ass bohemian lifestyle or something but i totally would love that um again uh let's get rid of that and then yellow you're next you need to unmute yeah there you go <laughs> everything you're saying i'm experiencing what? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> we want to join. I, I left the mountains for 22 years in Slovakia, where you were constantly energized from the mountain without even knowing that you're getting energized. Then I moved to Prague, and then I start realizing the energy field and esoteric and everything open, open up. But Prague is also a beautiful city because it's very magical and alchemistic city. If somebody loves a mysterious, magical town because of Rudolf, King Rudolf, he was the alchemist and he brought a lot of magic and mystery there. And uh, also, I, it's very interesting because then I was in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> living in Frankfurt and I know exactly what you're talking about people are very much to themselves and then when I moved to US 
people give you the opportunity to know you they don't need to know you for a whole year before they really can say if they like you or they don't like you it's just very open and actually i i moved to new york but it's a long island it's surrounded by water and it's a place it's called sea cliff and it's very russian and it's very beautiful it's right on the top it, it's it's really reminding like a little australian city with victorian houses every friday in the summer we have the music it's very hippie town and you know when you feel energy as you start dimensionality energetically rise you can feel everything and it's just like and you create the own reality but you start realizing only what you have to do when you keep your frequency high everything else just plugs in beautifully you meet a beautiful person you but you are the creator and i more i start being in america i start realizing that how beautiful the life can be we can live the paradise right here right now and um it's Aww. just like i just love to be with all of you and it's just just such a beautiful family we can share all these beautiful hearts and emotions and and we understand each other where we're coming from what we are saying and with the and the open or a heart is just beautiful i'm just feel very thankful to be with all of you here you know oh this... we feel thankful thankful for you daniela <laughs> thank you so much oh, this was beautiful it, it feels like uh thank you thank you so much for sharing that <laughs> I'm gonna add to that. Oh, that's beautiful. And Thank anyone you. Anyone who comes to New York, you just let me know, and I will show you around, pick you up, and and show you around. You know. Oh, <laughs> oh, so this beautiful. This this community is so so beautiful. I'm so thankful for for all of you and. Um, the the one hour is almost over and and Daniela <laughs> you hit like the the perfect ending for for the first agora and Hedy says it's so sweet uh, and Sarah I think said the same thing so yeah thank you so much Daniela um, wow okay this this hour went over like like in like a few minutes or something it was so beautiful seeing you all and Daniela this was like the perfect ending to it. Um, I've been to to uh, mountains like one week or something ago, mm -hmm. and the energy were incredibly it, it's, incredible. It's too. magnetic. It's magnetic. Oh, it's just you don't need just to be that you are. It's totally enough. That's so true. You and are the, right here, right now. That's it's really true. And the thing is that you know we create this energy field, and we share that with the people that we you know live together. So the energy in cities is different than in you know. Yes, yes, in, right. And I still, when I go to my, I used to play, I play basketball in a little town in Poprad, Slovakia. And anytime I come, I come there, we get together. Just we didn't see each other yet since yesterday. We didn't see each other twenty years. It, it timing doesn't matter. Because the emotion is so strong to hold us together for the rest of our lives. Oh, this is so this beautiful. Is... <laughs> thank, thank you so much. What an ending. Daniela, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. So all of you, uh, this was amazing. I really enjoyed that. Uh, again, I would love to do something, you know, about the, the male and the female parts maybe next time. Um, if you have ideas, let's let's chat on on Patreon. Let's uh, communicate and let's um, let's see what we come up with the next agora. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for spending <laughs> this, you know, uh, Saturday night, at, at least in my time zone. Uh, um, Sunday morning for everyone <laughs> watching in Australia. Um, beautiful uh <laughs> love you all and uh, see you soon <laughs> loving you all bye bye, oh. <laughs> bye everyone and bye to youtube too <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. Where's, <laughs> where's the end button? <laughs> but they, they, I will show you from another. I have to show you this girl. She's lying down. Woman, wake up. Let's go. Oh, I love this dog. <laughs> this is my she, absolutely favorite. No, incre incredible. Dobermans are very. Before I adopt her, I have to really read a lot about Doberman because they're very emotional. You, you, you have to really have your emotion in check. This is wow. just. This, she is incredible, incredible girl. But she's this sleeping is... right now. Oh yeah, she's. Of course, we had a rainy day. We, we did the walk. Sounds for forty. I have to clean the garden because my neighbor always clean the garden, and I have to go and have a nice garden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, <laughs> this thanks. But anytime, thanks. absolute. Anytime you come to New York, I, we can pick you up, show you around. That's what I do. This is oh, this beautiful. Is, I, I love it. <laughs> oh, we have such a beautiful community. Daniela, this thank you beautiful. so much. Absolutely. Bye bye, team. Thank you so much. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>